Welcome back, lords and ladies, to another episode of Lords Mobile's Beginner's Guide. I am your host, Avatrex, and today we're going to be talking about buildings. Because buildings, especially early on, are a very important part of your growth. So a lot of people may have questions regarding, well, how do I improve my construction speed? What buildings should I be building, etc. So we're going to go ahead and tackle all of those questions here. Now, the first thing that you want to do, especially when you're uh, first starting out, is making sure that all of your spaces are unlocked. So as you continue on, you might run into some of these skirmishes here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you clear them all out as you are progressing now some of them you may not be able to clear right away but try to clear them out as soon as you can now with this one let's go ahead and see what we got on this one we got a bunch of archers so that means that a lot of infantry will do the trick but since we don't really have a lot of troops we're just going to send them all out and see if we can go ahead and clear it uh, all in one go the good thing about this also is is that while you're clearing these out you can actually uh, save your progress so if you do X amount of damage it doesn't actually reset back to 100% so with that in mind uh, looks like I was able to go ahead and actually go in and get it all the way out down to zero so when you take it all the way down to zero we'll go ahead and unlock new spaces which means that we're gonna be able to build new things so there we go and the game will tell you you know you get you got manors barracks and infirmaries now, if you ever need information as to what these buildings actually do, you can go ahead and click on it and then click on the eye right next to the building and it will give you an idea of what this building does, what it provides you, all the way up to level 25. Now, each plot of land that you unlock will give you more options, but keep in mind that in each uh, section, there are only certain buildings that you can build. So you can't just go and build infirmaries, for instance, in all of the slots that you get because there are going to be designated buildings for those slots. Now, knowing that and knowing that these skirmishes are going to be all throughout the your uh, castle here, once you go ahead and unlock all of them, you'll have everything unlocked to you and it'll look something like this. And there we go. We have everything unlocked. And so once you have all this new land unlocked, a lot of people may be asking, OK, but what do I take up first? What building should I focus on, etc.? There's that's a very good question now. What I would suggest, especially when you're first starting out, instead of focusing on all of the resource buildings or infirmaries, etc., um, or any of the buildings over here later on, what I would suggest you do is just follow your castle. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and show you. Now, as you're taking your castle up, it will give you some suggestions as to what buildings you need to be taking up in order to then take the castle up. So before you're level 25, you can easily just go over to your castle, go to upgrade and see the buildings right below here that you need to upgrade before taking the castle up. Now, this is a great way to generally take your castle up because that'll give you an array of different things that you uh, need to improve and it'll start giving you idea of the buildings that you should have and the building that you should be taking up not only that the castle sometimes will take you on a wild goose chase if you will because I'll give you an example castle wall level 8 so let's say that you want to go ahead and take up the castle wall to level 8 you click on proceed and then you go to the castle wall go to upgrade and now it says that you need the workshop level 8 before you can take the castle wall up so you go ahead and proceed and it'll take it to the workshop and guess what It'll take you to the now mines to level eight. And then now that you're in the mines, then you can go ahead and upgrade. So the game is essentially telling you, okay, you need to go ahead and upgrade this. But before you do, you need to take this building up first. So this is a great way of making sure that you have some construction going all the time and making sure that you're upgrading something. So what I would do in this case is I would go ahead and get my mind going on construction. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and do the workshop. And then once that's done, I'll do the wall. And then once that's done, I'll start with the trading post. 
and then you kind of keep going until you can take up your castle and then once your castle is at level 25 you'll have a general idea of what the buildings are for what they uh what you should be doing with them what level you should be taking them etc now the game especially before your level 25 will give you some hints it will give you some uh pointers as to what buildings you need to be taking up etc but let's say you've reached castle 25 you've done all the upgrades that it asks you to to make to get your castle level to 25 now what now you have free reigns what do you do well first of all let's go ahead and get started down here with the resource buildings that'll be on your southern part right here right now in this case you can go two routes generally speaking right you can go ahead and build a decent amount of each building so let's say you try to make as as equal amount of wood stone ore, and sometimes even food although i don't recommend it because a lot of times you're going to be at zero food regardless because your army is going to outgrow your food production so generally speaking i would suggest you only do one farm and then kind of divide out your other resource buildings like your ore your wood and your stone and early on i would probably suggest that over something else because you're going to be needing resources for everything for upgrading your research your construction etc uh healing troops making troops you're going to need a little bit of all the resources so early on making uh, maybe the buildings equal for, for the resources across here would be the best thing for you uh as you're going to need a lot of them and maybe gathering isn't really going to do it just for that uh so i would suggest probably going ahead and starting like that now later on what a lot of guilds have adopted especially if your guild has a bank where everybody sends the resource to to be able to heal everybody uh what a lot of people have adopted is having one of each building which generally becomes these four spots right here and then all the extra spots for resources every guild mate will have a specific resource that they're going to quote unquote hyper and essentially what that does is that let's say for me i have all ore so essentially what i do is i produce a lot of ore and i send to bank a lot of ore a lot of some some other people might do wood somebody else might do stone and so that that is so you can make a lot of one resource and then send it to the bank because if that bank is going to be taking care of your resources then at that point you don't necessarily need to worry about making all of the resources because the bank is going to be providing that for you so that's something that you can also be looking into once you get to 25 and you're finishing most of your buildings and you don't need as much resources then a lot of guilds will go ahead and do that with the resource buildings now here's a quick tip for you if you do adopt the hyper resource way make sure that you're using gear that will actually boost the resource that you're going to be hypering in my case like i mentioned i'm ore so these are the items that are going to be boosting up my ore production rate these are um, the items that i can go ahead and use to make sure that i'm making as much ore as possible and make sure that you're also using your ore production or whatever resource it may be for you uh boost right here because that'll give you another extra 25 percent so not only can you put all of these buildings to work you can put your gear to work as well now when it comes to this section right here where it's the barracks infirmaries and the manors generally speaking you'll only have one barracks because that's really all you need to train your troops there are situations where two maybe even sometimes three barracks would be better for you but that's very specific um, and i'll give you a perfect example for that let's say i'm doing t2 i'm training t2 it takes one day and 10 hours for me to train the max amount of t2 but let's say that i'm trying to use three day speed ups well even two barracks wouldn't be able to do that for me because i'd be at two days and just over what 21 hours so a lot of times what people do is they'll go ahead and they make three barracks and then that's when they'll start using their three-day speed ups because obviously you don't want to use three-day speed ups for one day so that's where an extra barracks would actually come in handy but generally speaking especially if you're training t4 etc you just need only one barracks from then on you have the ability to either make manners or infirmaries now generally speaking at the beginning 
you can go ahead and mix and match. You can make an equal amount of manors and infirmaries because it's going to be, both of them are going to be just as important early on. We have the manners, which will help you with your troop training speed. And you also have your infirmaries, which will help you uh, in healing troops, especially if you're attacked. So keeping an even number, especially early on, would be a good idea. Now, once you get late, later in the closer to the end game, when you're going to be mostly rallying or taking rallies or solo attacks, etc., I would suggest you go full uh, infirmaries. Now, the reason why that is, is because the more infirmaries you have, the more wounded soldiers that you can heal immediately, and then that means that you can take more solos, more rallies, etc. But, if you're ever in the need to train troops, especially if it's going to be quite a bit of troops, I would highly suggest for you to redo your buildings from infirmaries all the way to all manners because the difference in troop training speed is absolutely humongous. It is an insane amount. It's 20% troop training speed per manner. So you'll be getting up to upwards of like 300% more uh, troop training speed. So if you're ever going to be training a lot of troops, go full manners. And then once you're done training all the troops that you need, then go ahead and transition back to full infirmaries. But in the meantime, before you get to that stage, if you just go 50-50, that's perfectly fine. Or whatever you feel uh, you need as far as your infirmary space. And then the rest matters now these buildings right here are kind of self-explanatory you just kind of build one of each the only thing though is to try to put the buildings that you use the most closest to this because a lot of times you're going to be kind of like like this on the on the green screen where you see your castle etc so in order for you to have the most used buildings i would suggest just putting your uh your workshop here and then your academy here or whichever way and then the ones that you would use the least on the back here just it doesn't make a huge difference but just do whatever you feel would uh, make sense to you now the other buildings is going to be this right here where your familiars are going to be at now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about it but here's the way that I would set it up. I would really only make one Mystic Spire because you, you shouldn't be merging that much for that long. Um, but if you ever build more, just know that you're just going to be building for longer. You're not really going to be building faster. So keep that in mind. And then uh, for the gym, I would suggest only one gym unless you're really only training familiars and in that case i would build more gyms but the most important building here especially early on is going to be your spring a couple reasons why it's your anima production you basically need anima for everything so it's not only going to help your anima storage but your anima production so it's going to be a huge help to that there is also all of these extra bonuses that you're going to get merging speed boost for the packs this is what makes them merge faster max anima storage like i mentioned so the more swords you have the more you're going to be able to save for later whenever you're going to be doing something else and the anima production is going to be really really nice and handy now there is also a nice bonus increases merging speed for skill stones three percent for every one of these so early on uh make as many springs as you can and then at least one gym and at least one mystic spire now as you continue as you continue to grow your account if you are basically just going to be training your familiars and you're done with everything else then you can go ahead and make more gyms but outside of that this kind of setup right here is what i would recommend especially starting out now, outside of just the buildings themselves, there are other ways for you to go ahead and actually help with your construction boost. There are some heroes that will give you a construction speed boost, which will help with your building. Um, a couple of notable ones is Scarlet Bolt. She'll have construction speed 20%. And another one that a lot of people tend to get is also the big guy which is also a nice 30% construction boost. Now, there is also Sage of Storms, which you get fairly early on in the game, which will give you a nice construction boost. And, of course, there is other ones uh, like Witch Doll. So, 
Keep in mind that heroes do give you a nice amount of construction boost. And there is also some uh, research that you can do for this. So if you have the economy, you go all the way at the top. It's right there. Construction speed, 70% construction boost. Now that is really, really good. When you're starting out the game, economy is one of the better research trees for you to get. And not only for the construction boost, but it also has a lot of uh, resource harvesting, which you will need to be able to take up your buildings. Because that's the thing about buildings, right? You can have all the speed ups, you can have everything, but if you don't actually have the resources to make the buildings, it's all for naught. So the economy building, but especially construction speed, is a very important thing to grab, especially early on. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned before is that whenever you're doing construction, research etc you can actually see if uh if titles in your kingdom are available from whatever overlord it is so if you go over to the base and you take a look at titles every title gives you a different boost now for construction you're going to be looking at the engineer title right here so it'll give you a construction speed boost of 10 percent and that is for just the uh, overlord now there are even more titles that you can look into having an advantage and that's also going to be the baron titles so if you look at kingdom 71 you can actually take a look and see which uh, baron is uh, the ruling one over your kingdom so for me this time around is baron's dawn so if i go over to it and go to the base it'll give you here the district titles and for construction on this one, it will be the architect title. So not only can you get 10% from the overlord, you can get 10 more percent from the baron. Now, if we take it a step above that, you can also take a look at the emperor titles, which will give you even more boost. So if you take a look at these titles right here and you're looking at construction speed, you have high priest that'll give you another 10%. So with all of these titles, you can actually gain an additional 30% construction boost if you're able to get all of the titles together. And like this person is doing right here, you see that they have High Priest, Professor, and Scholar. That is an additional 30% research boost. So if you're able to do that, especially for the bigger constructions and the bigger researches, even better. Now, the last thing I want to touch up here uh, as far as construction is the boost. Make sure, especially for bigger constructions, that you're using the boost. Now, you have the construction speed right here, so you can go ahead and get an additional 10% for one hour. Now, just think about that. Just from titles and the boost, you can get 40% more. So whenever you're doing either like a castle upgrade, because castles are generally some of the bigger upgrades, especially like Castle 25, try to get as many boosts as you can because that will make a big difference. And aside from all of that, make sure that you're getting all of the helps that you can. When you start a construction, when you start a research, you can get up to 30 helps, which will give you a massive boost as far as how long that research or construction is going to take you. So if you can, if you're not in like a rush to finish a building all at once, etc., make sure that you start your building, ask for help, and hopefully you get the 30 helps that your guildmates can send you because that is going to take a lot. Sometimes it'll take days. I've had it to where it takes months off of research and construction. So make sure that you're using the resources that the game provides you whenever you can. So that'll do it for today's episode with buildings. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about familiars, which is a huge part of the game in pretty much all aspects of it. Uh, so going to be excited to tackle that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Appreciate you guys for coming through. And until later.